All right, this is the first video for the work in Power Notes. For this unit, I want you to be able to solve problems involving work, and that's a scientific work. I want you to be able to solve problems using conservation of energy and solve problems involving power. So when it comes to work, uh, we're going to consider two types of forces, constant forces and non-constant forces. So uh, a constant force is a force that uh, stays the same no matter what. A non-constant force would be a changing force. Uh, an example of that would be um, like a non-constant force would be like a spring. The, the farther you pull on a string, uh, the stronger that elastic force becomes. That, that would be a changing force. But for the time being, we're going to focus on constant forces, so a non-changing force. The way we calculate work is by taking the integral of the dot product of the force vector and displacement vector. So work equals the integral of the force vector dot the displacement vector. And then we need to unpackage this. Um, there's a lot going on here. First off, we've talked about how to add and subtract vectors. Now we need to talk about how to multiply and in some ways divide vectors. And there are two ways of doing that, the dot product and the cross product. Now we've already discussed the cross product in passing when we did torque. Um, the cross product of two vectors gives you a, uh, a vector. The dot product, however, gives you a scalar. And uh, that should be something that you discussed in your math classes. Now, when we're doing the dot product, we have to make sure that we're using parallel components of the vectors. Uh, we only want two parallel things to multiply uh, together. So looking at a diagram then, let's say we have a person. And this person is going to be pulling this box in this direction. So if we go ahead and make a list of the forces, well, we, we have this pulling force here. Uh, there are other forces on here, but let's just focus on this pulling force. And we can see that this pulling force is at an angle. So what we want to do is we want to find out this Fx, this, this uh, x component of the force, because if we think about it, the displacement is going to be in that direction. So we want to make sure that the force and the displacement are parallel to each other. So when we go to calculate the work, equal sign. This means that this work, you know, if the force is constant, it would equal this force times our displacement times cosine of theta. And notice how this cosine of theta is because this, this fx equals f cosine theta. So this would be how we would calculate how much work is being done. Uh, just a couple things here. Remember that cosine of 90 degrees equals zero, and cosine of zero degrees equals one. And that becomes important. Um, I guess I can also throw this on here also. Cosine of 180 degrees equals negative one. So with that knowledge, if we were to take a look at other forces acting on this crate, any kind of friction, if we look at that, for the friction, theta would equal 180 degrees. So we can see that friction is doing negative work. Uh, if we take a look at the, the gravitational force, well, for the gravitational force, theta would equal, um, well, we can say basically 90 degrees. So we see that the gravitational force is doing zero work. If we take a look at the normal force, theta would equal 90 degrees. So the normal force is doing no work.
So we have to uh, analyze a lot of things here, but keeping in mind that, you know, the only time we have work being done is when the force is being per, uh, parallel to the displacement. All right, now something else, this normal force. I want to discuss this normal force in greater detail. We have to be careful with the normal force. If I were to take a look at the forces on this y-axis here, I would see that I have a normal force, but I would also have a y component of that pulling force. Minus Fg, and it's an equilibrium on the y-axis, so all that equals zero. In other words, the normal force equals this Fg minus the y component of your pulling force. So doing a little bit of algebra here. So, you know, remember the normal force is the force from the surface pushing up on the object that is resting on it. So if this rope is at an angle, the rope is kind of picking up on the box as well. And since the rope is kind of lifting up on the box, um, the ground doesn't have to push as hard to help support the weight of that box. So that's why we have this minus this minus F sine theta in that formula. So be very careful. The normal force can be tricky. It's not always the same thing as the weight of the object. All right, now, since uh, work is a force multiplied by a distance, objects that are held in place have no work done on them. So if you're holding a heavy object above the ground, you know, it's going to take a great deal of effort, but there's no scientific work being done. But that begs the question, why do we get tired after holding a heavy object? So even though you're doing no work on the object you hold, there's still work being done inside your body. Your muscle fibers need to contract and expand. So that's, they're moving. They're, they're getting bigger and getting smaller. So that's, your muscle fibers are constantly moving in order to maintain the tension in your muscles. We consider that internal work. So it's internal work being done inside your muscles. However, we don't consider that internal work when we're, doing, when we're calculating the work done on an object. So that explains why you get tired, and yet we can still say there's no work being done on the object if you're holding it in place. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the net work. Uh, net mean, meaning sum. Um, so looking at... Um, the network when we have several forces acting on an object. So let's look at this object here. Let's say we got um, a force pulling on it. Uh, we would have a gravitational force. We would have a friction force. And then we would have a normal force. The network would be the sum of all works. And since uh, work is a scalar, we don't have to worry about vector addition. This is regular old scalar addition, you know, 2 plus 3 equals 5 stuff. So looking at this diagram then, we see that there are only two forces that are doing work. It's the work done by this pulling force plus the work being done by the friction. So if I were to go apply my formula, I would have a force times a delta x, and it's already parallel with the ground, so it's good, times cosine of 0 degrees plus the friction times delta x times cosine of 180 degrees. And we could go further from there, but uh, hopefully you see that the friction is doing negative work because cosine of 180 equals negative 1. All right, units. What is the unit of work? Well, looking at this, uh, as far as the units go, 
we have a Newton times a meter. Now, this is, might be a little confusing. The last time we saw a Newton meter, it was in terms of torque. You know, torque is measured in Newton meters. However, work is different. For work, because the force is parallel to the displacement, the work is moving something along a displacement. That means that it's changing the object's position, and it's also changing the object's kinetic energy. So with work, it's going to be energy. It's going to be the joule. So a Newton meter, when it comes to work, is a joule. Um, a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, so this is also a kilogram meter squared per second squared. So joule, Newton meter, kilogram meter squared per second squared, those are all units of energy. All right, speaking of energy, we also have to think about kinetic energy. Uh, where does that come from? Now, from earlier science classes, you probably remember the formula kinetic energy is one-half mv squared. Well, I'd like to show you where that comes from. Well, work, in its simplest form, we can think of it as force times delta x. And I can replace the force with m times a. Uh, you know, briefly touching on Newton's second law, especially for dealing with network and net, net forces. Well, another formula I could use is a kinematics formula. And notice that I have this A delta X in both. So I can do some substitutions. I can say that A delta X over here would equal um, 1 half V squared minus 1 half V naught squared. I can plug that in. And doing just a little bit more algebra. I come up with this expression right here. So we see that work is a change in something. And you know, we've later started calling this one half mv squared, but we started calling that kinetic energy. So what I can say then is that the kinetic energy is a you know it's a scalar quantity since work is scalar. Kinetic energy is always positive, however, the change in kinetic energy may be negative. And since we see that work is like this final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy, this leads us to the work kinetic energy there. Where work equals the change in kinetic energy of an object. Well, um, that's with linear stuff. I can do the same exact math with rotational stuff. So work could equal torque times angular displacement. Okay, well, torque can be thought of as I times alpha. And you know, we have our formula that states that I can do the same exact thing. And I think we can see where this is going. So, in other words, we have a formula now for rotational kinetic energy, which is one half I omega squared. So we can have both linear kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. All right, that will conclude video one.